Imagine you're diving in the ocean. I don't know what you're doing there, to be honest, but you're engulfed in the big blue. Then, out of nowhere, maybe in front of you, maybe behind you, maybe above or below you, a large shadow appears, hundreds of times bigger than you. It's a submarine. Holy God, that's terrifying. Even scarier is the thought that at any time, they could turn on the active sonar. Something that probably wouldn't even cross your mind, but that would be very bad for you. So, what actually happens if you get hit by sonar? Sonar is a navigation technique that uses sound to detect one's surroundings and measure distances. It's used by some animals like dolphins and whales, and its first recorded use by humans dates back to 1490 and is credited to Leonardo da Vinci. That fella's always up to something. This motherfucker don't miss. No, he's fucking good. That motherfucker don't miss, man. He's good. There are two types of sonar, passive sonar and active sonar. Passive sonar is basically just the act of listening for sound so you can detect things like fish or other vessels. Active sonar is what we're interested in and involves emitting a sound from a transmitter and using a receiver to pick up the sound's reflections off objects. Sonar is used by both surface vessels and submersibles, by both civilians and military. You might think sonar is a little ping sound like in the movies, although a sonar technician is more likely to refer to it as a pulse than a ping. Or you might even think it's at a frequency undetectable by humans. The truth is, sonar comes in a wide range of frequencies and can vary in its intensity depending on what equipment is being used and for what purpose. But it can be incredibly loud and travel great distances. You can find videos on YouTube of divers apparently being pinged by sonar. Now these are just videos on YouTube, so we'll have to take them with a grain of salt, but the people posting these videos all seem to say the same thing. The sonar's sudden arrival in the otherwise peaceful ocean is very frightening and it's also very loud. You can feel it in your body. It's important to note that no submarine or any other vessel can be spotted in these videos, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One, this type of active sonar can travel great distances, and remember, sound travels much faster and further through water than air. Two, sonar operators are generally very careful in where they use high intensity sonar due to its effect on marine life and divers nearby. They usually only do it miles away from the coast and because this kind of sonar gives away their position, which is kind of the opposite of what you want to be doing in a submarine, if you can hear it, they're probably just testing the equipment or training operators. Here's a few examples of what different types of sonar sound like. So how loud can sonar get? Well, it's actually up there with the loudest sounds in the world. The US Navy, for example, has sonar emitters that can generate up to 235 decibel pressure waves. These sound waves can travel for hundreds of miles underwater. Even 300 miles away from the source, they could be as loud as 140 decibels, depending on the conditions of the water. So if you can see the vessel when it's using that kind of active sonar, you're in a lot of trouble. 100 decibels is around when your hearing can start being damaged and 120 is around when the sound starts to become painful. At such high sound levels, the intensity of the sound can create significant pressure changes in the water, creating something that's more akin to a shock wave than a normal sound wave, almost like a bomb blast. At 200 decibels, the vibrations from these pressure waves can rupture your lungs, and that's no good. Decibels are not measured on a linear scale, but a logarithmic one, so an increase of 10 decibels corresponds to approximately double the perceived loudness. At 
210 decibels, the vibrations would be enough to hemorrhage your brain tissue, and that's definitely not good at all. So if you're too close to a boat using high intensity active sonar, the pressure waves could rupture your organs and it's a pretty terrible way to die. Thankfully, it's extremely unlikely to occur and there are no records of anyone ever being killed in this manner. But even hundreds of miles away, it could still be enough to cause painful hearing loss and induce nausea and dizziness. Thankfully, submarines and other vessels have various methods of deploying sonar, including ultrasonic, which would be undetectable to humans. Their use of high-intensity sonar is fairly limited for the reasons mentioned earlier. It gives away their position in a big way, and they're aware of how damaging it could be for nearby life. In fact, in scenarios where a vessel is in port and may be threatened by underwater divers with explosive charges, high-intensity active sonar is considered considered a possible means of defense. So even though it's possible, it's pretty much implausible that you would ever be hurt by active sonar. They're just very careful using this stuff. And your chances of coming across a military submarine are very slim. They typically operate in remote areas at depths beyond the reach of recreational divers. Although I think even just hearing sonar would be terrifying. Even when it's so far away, it doesn't do any damage. The underwater soundscape is probably pretty calm, 99.9 99% of the time. The most you're gonna hear is bubbles and water moving. Then, out of nowhere, a loud piercing ping sound. I'd never want to go back into the water if that happened to me. Marine life seems to agree, as animals like whales will swim hundreds of miles to get away from the sound of active sonar. Some cause themselves injury or death by beaching themselves or rapidly changing depths and suffering severe decompression sickness as a result. Put yourself in the whale's shoes, or flippers, or whatever. Imagine one day we're all just chilling on Earth like we always are, and then suddenly we get hit by a terrible sound or blinding light by some alien species that are technologically advanced to the point of basically being gods to us. And the reason they did it was part of some experiment or operation beyond our comprehension. They didn't even mean to cause us harm, nor do they even really care. It's just a byproduct of something else they were doing. If aliens exist and have the same level of consideration for Earth as we do, we're in a lot of trouble. And you're in a lot of trouble right now, if you haven't subscribed, that is. You see, I've made a lot of videos and continue to make them every week. So if you enjoyed this one, you can watch some more from my catalog or subscribe to see future releases. Coming close to a million, so I would appreciate it. And who doesn't want to be part of that journey? The road to one million. So hop on board, because this train doesn't have any brakes. Well, it probably does, but I don't really know how to operate a train. Anyway, I'll see you next week. Until then, stay safe.